Okay, so everyone is talking about AI and how it's going to completely change the way we work. But you know, there's a huge gap between all that hype and what's actually happening on the ground. Today, we're going to dive into how we can bridge that gap and really turn AI from just another tool into a true partner in the workplace. I mean, this quote from a recent study just nails it, doesn't it? AI isn't just software. People are seeing it as a superpower, something that's like an extension of our own minds. And that promise, that idea, is why everybody from tiny startups to massive corporations is racing to get it integrated. And that, right there, is the billion-dollar question. It's one thing to get excited about having a superpower, but it's a whole other challenge to figure out how to use it right, you know, without causing total chaos. And that's the real problem that leaders and employees are wrestling with right now. And the pressure is on. Seriously. A huge survey from Accenture found that a whopping 84% of executives believe AI agents will be working side by side with their human teams in the next three years. This isn't some far off future stuff. It's happening like now. But here's where it gets interesting. Here's the big disconnect. Even with all that pressure from the top, only 26% of workers say they've gotten any training at all on how to actually work with AI. This creates what you could call a massive readiness gap between the ambition and the actual ability to pull it off. So what does it really look like to close that gap? Let's get into the nitty gritty, the reality of AI adoption, especially for the small and medium-sized businesses that are out there on the front lines. You might think that bringing in AI is some neat, tidy, top-down plan. Well, research into smaller companies shows it's pretty much the opposite. It's often messy, it's spontaneous, teams are just reacting to problems as they pop up and experimenting on the fly. They're learning as they go. It's really less about a grand strategy and way more about just making a bunch of practical adjustments. Okay, this slide gives us a fantastic way to think about this mindset shift. The old way of doing things was kind of like a baton race, right? One person does their part, hands it off to the next person, and so on. But to make AI work, you need to think more like it's a football game. Everyone's on the field at the same time. They all see the whole play. They support each other. And the leaders, they're not sitting in some far-off office. They're on the sidelines, acting like coaches, guiding the team in real time. Of course, it's not all smooth sailing. I mean, employees are worried. Are my skills going to become useless? Are we going to lose that critical human touch? And then you have the really practical headaches, the massive amount of work it takes just to get data ready for AI, the fact that you still need people to manually check the quality, and the very real risk of becoming way too dependent on the tech. But here's the cool part. Out of all this messy, experimental reality, a clear pattern for success starts to show up. It's not some rigid rulebook, but more like a flexible playbook that pretty much any organization can use. And this three-phase model is a real game changer. It all starts with preparation. You got to get everyone on the same page with a shared vision, get your data in order. Then you move to pilot projects. You start small, you experiment, you get a few quick wins under your belt to build momentum. And only then, after you've learned from those small tests, do you move on to scaling, expanding AI into the bigger, more critical parts of the business. And this playbook, it's all building towards a much, much bigger idea for the future. This isn't just about using a new tool. It's about creating a genuine partnership between people and AI. And the future is all about something called co-learning. So what the heck is co-learning? Well, think of it as a two-way street. It's this continuous feedback loop where we are constantly teaching the AI how to be better. And in that same process, the AI is teaching us, helping us get better at our own jobs. It's a truly symbiotic relationship. And this, this right here, illustrates that idea perfectly. It's a flywheel. The more we work with AI, the better the AI gets. And the better the AI gets, the more confident we are using it. It just creates this amazing self-reinforcing cycle where both the person and the machine get smarter and better. That, right there, is co-learning in action. Let's make this super concrete. Picture a call center. A rep is on a call and an AI is listening in the background suggesting the best things to say. Now, if the human rep ignores a suggestion or maybe tweaks a phrase to make it sound better, the AI doesn't just forget that. It learns from it. It sees that edit as feedback, and it uses it to make its future suggestions even better. So the human gets help, the AI gets smarter, and the customer gets way better service. Everybody wins. So this all sounds great, but how do you actually create an environment where this kind of co-learning can really take off? Well, the research points to four absolutely essential conditions that organizations have to build. 
And you have to see these numbers. The payoff for getting this right is just staggering. First, when leaders encourage curiosity, not just demand efficiency, their companies are four times more likely to innovate, four times. Second, when learning is actually part of the job, not some extra thing you have to do, people develop skills four times faster. Third, when you build trust through clear ethics and transparency, you get eight times more trust in leadership. And finally, when the AI tools actually feel intuitive and work the way people work, you see five times higher engagement from your team. These aren't just little improvements. These are transformational. But here's the reality check. As amazing as all those benefits are, the companies that have actually put all four of these conditions in place are still in the minority. We're talking only about 11% of companies surveyed. Now that's not a reason to get discouraged. That's an opportunity. It means there's a clear roadmap for everyone else to follow. And that really brings us to the final critical question that every single leader, every employee should be asking themselves. It's not about if AI is coming, it's here. The real question is this, are we building a culture where our people and our AI can learn together and learn fast enough to not just keep up with all the change, but to actually lead it 